he bore on himself. He removed to take away our sicknesses. I think that's powerful. All the time this scripture reminds me of a little girl many years ago. Little girl years ago had problems with her lungs. She couldn't breathe anymore. She had to be on bed rest completely, connected to oxygen. And because um, her lungs were badly damaged, the doctor said there was no hope she was going to die. And her mother was taking care of her now. As she got closer to her death, she couldn't take solid food for months. And um, while on the bed, her mother gave her a little Bible to study. So she was reading and waiting to die. Can you imagine? Just waiting to die. She knew she was dying. She was waiting to die. So, she was taught in the Bible and she came to 1 Peter chapter 2. And she got to this place reading about Jesus. From verse 21, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guy found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judged righteously who his own self bore our sins on his own body on a tree and she broke down and started crying dear lord jesus thank you because you bore my sins on your own body on the cross And now that I'm dying, I'm coming home. So I'll see you soon, Lord Jesus. And she prayed that prayer. With tears in her eyes. So she kept on reading. Are we being dead to sins? To live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. Oh, she said, I never saw that before. By whose stripes you were healed? Oh. Lord, I just thanked you for bearing my sins. I didn't know you healed me too. Then she said, Lord, I'm sorry I won't be coming home very soon. <laughs> She got rid of the oxygen. Now, remember, she hadn't eaten solid food for months and she had grown to skin bones. Skin bones. I think tuberculosis had taken its toll. It was many years ago. And she came off of that place, took the oxygen off, walking ever so slowly. Mama! And her mother heard her scream and then she ran downstairs. What is it, darling? What is it? Get my breakfast. What? When the mother saw her, she almost fainted. She started crying and got her together and carried her back to bed. No, honey, you haven't eaten solid food for months. I'll call a doctor. No, she said, Mama, I just read the Bible. Jesus already healed me. Mama said, Oh, no. <laughs> the doctor said, The day you die, you'll lose your mind. Now, isn't that amazing? When you start acting on, on the word of God, they say you've lost your mind. No, the day you die, you lose your mind. That's what the doctor said. And while she was talking to the doctor, the girl came out of that place again, got into the kitchen, 
and God herself announced me. Mama was all the time crying now until the doctor came. Honey, what's the matter? Put on the bed. What's the matter? She said, nothing the matter. I just found out Jesus already healed me. Now, did she feel healed? No, she didn't. No, she didn't. She didn't feel healed. What happened? She saw it in the Word. That the same scripture where it said Jesus took our sins away, it said we were healed. He took our sins, past tense. We were healed, past tense. The same way I can accept that when Jesus died on Calvary, he died for me and took my sins away. I can accept that he took my sicknesses away. That's what we just read. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Removed, carried away our sicknesses. He did. If he did, what are you doing with yours? A dear lady some years ago found out something. She said, um, you know, people were wondering how come she'd been so confident. Things had been going wrong and everybody was afraid, but she was never afraid. So some of the friends got around and they asked her, why are you so confident? In the night time when the bombing, we all get under the 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 get in the cellars and we are afraid and we stay up all night and you never join us oh she said i always stay at home why oh she said i found out in the bible that the lord never sleeps nor slumbers and i thought if he doesn't sleep then i should sleep it's no use two of us staying awake It's no use two of us staying awake because he's awake for me so I can rest can you see it it's just that simple the Bible says casting your cares upon him for he cared for you so why are you caring when you're supposed to cast your cares on him why should both of you be caring for the same thing together he said, cast your cares on him, for he cares. So, no need for the worry. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Anxiousness should go. That's anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God... <laughs> That surpasses understanding. It says it's beyond understanding. Shall garrison your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Say this with me. I refuse to worry. Say it again. I refuse to worry. I refuse to worry. Be anxious for nothing. That's what the Bible says. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't be anxious about anything. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, this is wonderful. Wonderful. See, it's better for us to take sides with God. What do you think? Take sides with God and not against God. If he says, don't be anxious about anything then refuse to be answered about anything i'm just worried i don't want that i'm just worried but the word of god says not to be worried about anything so to be worried means that you're taking sides against god i refuse to worry, refuse to worry. see you keep the smile of a victor on your face i refuse to worry, refuse to worry. see worrying people are never successful in fact, when they are successful in anything, it is short-lived. Because the spirit of worry will destroy it. 
Worry destroys success. People who worry are not successful for long. Did you hear what I just said? Say, I refuse to worry. The Bible says, count it all joy when you go through diverse tests. In other words, when things are hard, it says, count it all joy. Why does God say count it all joy? Because he needs you to function in that way in the kingdom of God to enjoy the benefits of the gospel of Jesus Christ in your life. Count it all joy. When you go through diverse tests, he says there are diverse tests, all kinds of tests, trials, tribulations. He says count it all joy. Maintain your joy in those situations. Somebody said, but it's very hard to do so. It is not hard to do so. It is natural for a child of God to be able to do so. When you submit your mind to the word. Practicing God's word is natural for a child of God. How could, oh, come on here. God knows you. And when God tells you to do anything, it means you're perfectly fashioned to be able to do it. Why would God tell you to do something you say it's hard? It's only someone who's not a child of God that cannot do the word of God. We are called word doers. He says, be ye doers of the word. He didn't call us to obey the word. He said to do the word. We are not trying to obey the word. We do it. We live it out. Because the Word of God has taken up residence in our spirits. We are born of the Word of God. We are the very offspring of the Word. So whatever the Word of God tells us to do, we are able to do because it is our life. Say this, the Word of God is my life. I was born of the Word. And when I hear the Word, I receive it with my spirit. And I function accordingly because I have the nature of the Word of God. I am one with the Word. Oh, come on, that's it. That's it. You see, you're, oh, come on. Let's, let's take another step forward. You still with me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. My, 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 my. All right, Let, let's look at something here. The book of Joshua. Joshua chapter number one. You in Joshua chapter one? All right, let me read something to you from verse one. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant or minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over the Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. He says, take them to the land that I'm giving to them. God tells Joshua, after the death of Moses. All right? Now, Joshua is the new man. He's the new leader. Watch this. This is beautiful. Verse 3. How easy could this be? God said this. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Kai! As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Ooh. Mine, oh mine. Way back in 1980, that's what God said to me. That's the, he told me, he told me that. He said, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Wow. He said, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And with that, how could I ever be afraid? Never. Praise God. Now look, verse, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. 
For unto these people shall thou divide for, <laughs> I like this, shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Now, look, God says, I've given you a land and I want you to go possess it. Be strong and very courageous. God will not tell you to be strong and very courageous if he doesn't know there's something there that you ought to be strong about. Do you understand? So he knew there was something there. <laughs> so God says, all I want you to have is strength of heart and courage. Only be thou strong, verse 7, and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Oh! For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. It says, be strong and of a good courage. Neither be thou dismayed. In other words, if things go down, don't be dismayed. Oh. Oh. Mm. Don't say, why me? That's what he's saying. He says, be courageous. Be strong. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. Because you may be surrounded on every side. Things may seem to be going down on every side. He said, don't look around and say, oh God. Oh. He said, don't be afraid. And don't be dismayed. Hmm? Oh God, I didn't back in for this. I didn't back in for this. What do you mean? Say, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. And I will never be dismayed. Hallelujah. Now, this is beautiful. Okay, you know the story. You remember, they had been afraid. When Moses had sent 12 spies to go to spy out the land of Canaan, whether indeed it flowed with milk and honey, they came back and said, truly. Truly, truly. It flowed with milk and honey, they said. But then they said, there was only one thing um, Moses didn't tell us about and we saw there. There are giants there. The sons of Anak are there. And when we saw them, <laughs> we were as grasshoppers. They were as giants and we were as grasshoppers before them. And so were we in our own eyes. Since we saw ourselves as grasshoppers. They saw us as grasshoppers, we saw others as grasshoppers. And you know, grasshoppers never move in a consistent direction until they apply the law of flight. Until they fly, they have no consistency. He said, there were giants there. We cannot take it. The land flows with milk and honey, but we cannot take it. Why? He said, there are giants. And the people wept bitterly. Two men stood out. Joshua and Caleb. This same Joshua. And Caleb, they stood out and said, hold on, brethren. God promised us that land. And if the Lord be with us, he said the giants are bread for us. Oh, glory to God. 
He said, we will eat them up. They are bread. They are bread. Only two men out of the twelve. The other ten said, we cannot go. We saw the giants there. Haven't you heard of the sons of Enoch? Huh? We were as grasshoppers before them. Giants. And they are strong. They are very strong. Look at us. Let's not go. It flows with milk and honey. Sure. God said so. And we saw it. We, they said, we indeed saw it. But we cannot take it. That is like looking at your health. And sickness attacks. You find a giant in your body. Between what God says. And where you are. How can I go through this diabetes to enjoy my health? How can I go through this cancer? Because it's the giant of cancer. How can I? How can I? You may hear testimonies from different places. Like you're hearing Joshua and Caleb saying their own, say that don't mind the two of them. Please, everybody knows his own trouble. My faith is not as much as the faith of Caleb. No. 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 What stands in your way? Let's look at Caleb.